Scrappy friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be working on the first process video in the Country Manor Journal from Journals for Life. This is the November 2022 kit. It has a lot of country, cozy, warm colors in this kit, which makes it a great kit for the fall. Um, I, when I first got this kit, I was debating two different things to do with this project. I was debating doing a Thankful 30, which I think is a fantastic idea, and I plan to do one of those, but in a different notebook. And what I ultimately decided to do with this notebook is to document my family's travels last November in 2021. We always go visit my in-laws in Illinois and the kids are always excited to see their grandparents and we go every year so we've been going well the kids have been going for 13 and 15 years and I've been going for a few years before that so I thought it would be really fun to use this journal to document last year's trip I have previous trips in larger albums but since we've been going so often our number of photos decreases each year. So since this kit was about home and cozy vibes, I decided um, documenting how this is a home away from home for us, staying at my in-law's house, would be a great starting page. Now what I'm doing is I use the word home stamp from the stamp set and I stamped it onto cardstock here. The reason I did that is one, I wanted to see if I would like it as a title on my heart, but also I was using a sort of juicy, really um, dark and thick um, ink, I shouldn't say thick, um, juicy ink, and it's a dark color. And so I was worried about bleed through to the other side. And since I wasn't totally sure what my next page was going to be or how I was going to design it, I didn't want to take the chance that um, there would be bleed through on a section that I couldn't cover. So what I end up doing, initially this was just a tester to see if I liked the way the word home looked. And actually I liked how it had a little white edge around the word. And because it is fussy cut out, has a little bit of dimension. I just adhered it flat to the heart page, but because it is a second piece of paper, it has just a slight dimension, which is nice to get in a traveler's notebook because I'm often trying to keep it pretty flat uh, to avoid too much bulk. So end up um, cutting out the word home and I will end up cutting out the small center to the circle as well. Initially I wasn't going to do that, I was just going to leave it to keep it simple, but I didn't want that big bold um, amount of white. So I'm just doing the best I can to trim out the white center and I think it looks really good once it's done. So what I also end up doing with this is I've got a picture of my in-law's house and whenever we go in November they always have their Christmas lights on so this was really a fun and festive picture. But being that the title was sort of large and the picture even though 3 by 4 took up a good part of the page I didn't have any room for journaling. And so what I end up deciding to do is making the picture a flip up. And then that gives me a space for my journaling. Right here I am playing with the washi tape that comes in the kit. I um, am just cutting off the edges there. This is a really fun washi tape. It has several different houses on the pattern. Um, anywhere from kind of a large mansion to a small cottage to a townhouse. I thought it was a really, really fun decorative piece. So now also using the stamp set there's a sentiment that says this feels like and I thought that would be great as part of my title to put above my home and I wanted the color to match with the washi tape so I found sort of a burnt orangey color that matches one of the houses in the washi tape and I think it looks really good 
um, stamped like that. So now I'm just um, putting some embellishments on. There was a little teacup that came in the die pack. Um, I have this wood veneer piece that is from last month's kit, and I had that left over, so I pulled that out. Now, this is the card that I picked out from the embellishment pack that I want to use to back my photo. Now, I really loved the really subtle colors on this card. The print is pretty small and doesn't really distract from the story or the picture, but I wanted to add something to the center. So at first I think I'm going to use the burnt orange color like I did with the feels like, um, but it was a little too bold and just didn't quite look the way I had envisioned in my mind. So I go with this green eucalyptus and there is some green in the washi and in the card. And I like this because obviously you can see the house, but it's not so bold that it takes away from the rest of the, the spread. And this actually is going to be underneath, so you won't see it uh, when you first look at the page. But I felt like the house wasn't quite enough, and so I'm using these floral pieces, or I guess this is sort of um, like a wreath, not a, not a circular wreath, but like a swag wreath. And I'm using that as some decorative um, element below the house. And now I'm using uh, this newer buttercream color from Catherine Pooler and the little flower stamp in the set. And just making a little decorative edge around the square um, sort of cutout center of the card. I love it. It is so subtle, but just adds that little bit of decorative element that I wanted inside this card. So now what I want to do is I'm going to put it on the back of my picture, and I printed my picture to be exactly the size of this card. Um, I can't remember the exact dimensions. I want to say it was about two and a half by three. Um, and that would definitely be worth checking out just to double check that. So to make a flip up, what I am doing is using some plain printer paper. So a very thin quality paper. I cut about, um, I'm gonna say the picture's about three inches long and by about one and a half inches. I then scored it in the middle to make a hinge and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add that uh, printer paper or part of the hinge in between the card and the photo. So I've got this little edge hanging off. And then my printer paper is a little too long, so I'm just going to trim it off. And so the reason I did this using printer paper and not cardstock is because if we're using cardstock, it can get pretty thick. Um, one, it'll add more bulk to the page, and right there I was just showing how another option would be to use washi tape. I was debating doing that for um, some decorative element, but I thought it was a little too much for that. I'm going to try some other washies, and I end up uh, not going with any of them. So back to the, the hinge part. Uh, the reason I use the printer paper is because I don't want added bulk to my page and I also um, want the picture to lay flat. If there is a thicker cardstock being used for the hinge, the picture will pop up just a little bit and won't lay quite as flat. The printer paper, although I wouldn't use for a spread because it's not a good quality paper, for a hinge it works really well. So now I'm trying some different options. I wanted a little flip up tag down at the bottom so the reader knows that this is going to be a flip up page or flip up element. I tried um, folding some washi tape that um, sometimes can be a good um, system to use but because there were so many colors on this particular one I didn't like how that looked. Now I'm just um, moving along until I figure out what I want to do. I am 
cutting out a white cardstock to for my journaling part. Now here, what I'm going to do is I ended up using a label from the embellishment pack and I cut it in half and I'm going to use that for my uh, pull-up tab. I wanted a little bit of decoration on it so I'm going back and using that swag wreath using the matching green color for the house that was on the inside and I am going to use that for my my tab. I end up, will need, I'll need to pull up the photo from the card backing because I wasn't planning to do the tab initially and so the two pieces are adhered. Ends up working fine and I right now I'm just putting that aside so I can figure out what I want to do for my journaling portion. So I took the grid, one of the grid stamps from the grid stamp set. You can see that there and I'm trying to figure out which one I want to use. Um, they're all a little longer than my cardstock piece so I'm just laying them out trying to figure out which one I think is going to work best. The one that you see in the picture here is the one that I use and I end up just moving it over to the side to get the right alignment that I want. I just ink it up with some basic black ink that I have and I'll use that for my journaling lines on my card. I have gotten so much use out of this grid line. Um, I use it for a lot of my journaling pieces in my traveler's notebooks. Um, it is just, it's a great size. It's got the lines there for me so I don't go crooked when I'm trying to write. And um, it's been a great piece to add to my collection. So as you can see there, I'm going to adhere the grid card to the back side or I'm putting the hinge on the back side of the grid card so you don't see a hinge you don't see that paper hinge when you're opening the card uh, looks like I didn't have it quite as straight as I wanted and so I'm just redoing that so now I'm just gonna trim off the edge that didn't line up quite right before I adhere this down, I'm going to insert the tab that I made. Luckily, I only used a dot roller adhesive, and so it was very easy to pull up the card and the picture. I love using this dot roller adhesive because although it holds long term overall, when I make a change in plans, it's somewhat easy to pull up. So just a side note on that. So now I'm just making sure that it flips open, that it's going to work the way I want, and we're going to move on to embellishing now. So I love this little moth, or there's several moths that come in the kit, and it's got some of that burnt orange color that matches my um, stamp title. I also wanted something um, on the left side or above my picture, and you saw me trying to play around with some washi tape earlier in the video. Those were just too bold and too distracting. And so what I ended up deciding to do was to cut apart the other half of the tab that I had left. I cut it into approximately a third and two third pieces, lined it up sort of like it was um, uh, a square rectangle, sort of like a right angle. And then the two pieces, the two corners did not line up exactly. So I used one of these moths to hide the corner that didn't line up. Now it actually looks like a different shape label, a shorter stockier label, and it works perfect for just a little bit of embellishing without being too distracting on my page. I am using some leftover sequins that I had from last month. The kind of a burnt orange teal work great with the colors from my page. And I love these dimensional flower sequins. They are so pretty and you just can't have enough flowers and sparkly anything on a page. Um, right here you see I'm, I'm trying to glue everything down and ultimately I end up pulling out some um, glue dots for the flower sequins. The pointed edge of this 
flower that's going to adhere to the page is just not large enough for it to really be secured down with the glue. So what I end up doing is pulling out some glue dots and then that works great. Um, I'm also using one of the add-on flowers to make a paper clip for an added embellishment to the top. And that is everything for this page. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching.